Let's take a look at the 6 foot 4, 180 pound guard out of Toledo, Ryan Rollins. And with all my breakdowns, I want to start with the shooting, as you see him walk into a catch and shoot there and knock it down. But he only shot 31% from three last season at Toledo, but he did shoot 80% from the free throw line. You see him jab step here and able to knock this one down against Bowling Green. I just think there's potential for him to be better than that. I'm not saying a 40% guy, but after maybe a few years of working on it from NBA depth, maybe he's a mid 30s guy. And then with everything else he has that might be enough and what he can definitely do is knock it down off the dribble as you see him look real comfortable there against Michigan State now where he's not comfortable shooting from three and where I didn't see a lot was on what I call movement or coming off screen so you see him not able to knock that one down so definitely an area he can work on to be a three level score but the other two levels there's a lot to like he was 54% from two overall last season I love this clip look at his ability to avoid this hard hedge and then stay on his feet keep his balance and then pop right into a mid-range pull up with soft touch he has such a bag as you see him here go straight isolation little crossover now he's going the other way able to pop into it and knock it down the shot looks really pure in the mid-range here and here against Richmond he's going to go to a step back and knock it down he's not going to create a lot of easy shots guys he's not he's more of a tough shot maker but again he has the full bag as you see the fake spin rise up he's going to miss this one long but you see all the different ways and different kind of mid-range shots he has now Richmond and Michigan State did give him trouble those were two of the higher level games he played in into the game here down two, gets stripped trying to go to his mid-range and then Max Christie did a really nice job on him as you see him try to play in the mid-range and just again he's not going to create a ton of separation he's going to have to make tough shots and that one Christie's able to get a hand on but he does have a little bit of a mid post game as you see him fake the spin there in to almost a step back and again just the bag is full in terms of the mid-range and then he can get to the rim as well so here again against Michigan State able to jab and go by and then kind of the James Harden throw his arms out okay whether we like it or not it gets him to the free throw line so he has the ability to go by and get to the rim as well just a rip through and go here and again I talk about tough shots off one foot kind of off balance but the body control is really good as he knocks it down and speaking of body control the one thing I loved was this he plays through the contact at the rim so well as you see him take it there and then able to finish for the and one and then I have no idea how he makes this shot so same thing he's gonna make this shot here so he takes the contact and then is able to play through it double contest here two defenders and then is able to control his body and finish so really really impressive stuff now again there's always stuff to work on here against Richmond he's still going to get into the lane but playing through the length of teams like Richmond and he struggles a little bit with his left hand I think that's something he can definitely work on and then we're going to see it again against Michigan State so he's able to go by but then playing through their length gets blocked not able to finish so is that going to be a big issue for him at the next level and then I think off ball cutting is something that I only saw a little bit would like to see more so here he knows the defenders overplaying the pin down goes back door but you're going to see not a real big vertical pop guy so you see he kind of hesitates and then ends up getting blocked but here you see they love running DHO stuff for him so he sets it up nice cut I, I, I use the term suddenness with this kid offensively. I think he has a lot of suddenness, not necessarily explosion, but he that's how he creates his separation. So that's the scoring package. He also can be a playmaker. So again, you see some dribble moves here. I don't think he forces a lot as you see him get a teammate a wide open three on the drive-in kick, and then he's really good. I talked about not finishing with his left, but he can definitely pass with his left. So easy read here, but he's able to make a very accurate on-time, on-target pass there there off the dribble with his left hand I think that's important that left hand passing that off the bounce passing I talked about not forcing shots so here it's not like he forces a tough shot yes he's a tough shot maker but it's only when he wants to take the shot he turns it down passes to a teammate this kid averages 15 a game gets him a good look so he's not a selfish player I would definitely not call him a selfish player and then just a good passer makes a beautiful read here even though his teammates not able to knock it down but makes a beautiful pass see him go get a defensive rebound on this possession would like to see more of this I'll talk about it in just a second but gets it in transition and then just a beautiful read of the defense and then an on-time on-target pass from Ryan Rollins now 
Richmond and Michigan State definitely frustrated him a little bit. This was one of the few times, though, where I saw him not make the right decision, gets called for a charge. So I just wanted to be completely unbiased, completely fair, that there were some, some possessions in those two games. And then there was a little bit with the handle at times where it got loose and got stolen. So we can definitely work on that. So that's the complete offensive package. Now the defensive end. Let's start with the positive. So this is one of the best possessions I could show early in the season against Coastal Carolina. You see him get up on the ball. Here he's chasing a couple guy off screens and a handoff, and he's just going to stay engaged, aggressive on the ball, and he's going to end up forcing a five-second call. So not a ton of these possessions on or off ball, but I did want to give credit for a couple. He has a bad habit of doing this, of jumping, and it's going to play into what he likes to do, which is be aggressive. But good job here staying in front. And then I'm going to highlight this because I'm going to talk about it later. I, even if he just did this, I would love to have seen more of this where he just boxes his man out. And you'll see why later that was so important to me. One thing he can be defensively, this may end up being the best thing, is a disruptor. So you see him play the passing lane here, get a handout in it, and able to create a transition for his team as he gets fouled and goes to the free throw line. He's pretty good at this. There's a transition possession, but stepping over and helping just rips the ball away. And then I love that. He doesn't put the ball on the ground. He gets his eyes up, makes the immediate pass, gets his teammate out in transition. And then here, he's not going to contest. He's not actually not bad just playing two hands straight up, but he's going to run in front, force the miss, so you can see where he can be a little disruptive, and then immediately gets the ball out of his hands in transition for his teammate to get a bucket. So that's going to be, if there's anything right now that I believe in, in for him in the NBA, it's that. Now, this clip even concerns me a little bit. He ball watches quite a bit. Watch him ball watching. He's standing straight up. I think an NBA player completes this pass, and he actually ends up giving giving up a wide open three. So that's what's a little concerning. How much of it is going to translate? How much can he get away with? On the ball, he gives up this a lot. So he not complete blow bys, but a lot of possessions that look right here. And then he does a good job saying two hands straight up, but he's 6'4", 180. How many NBA guys is he going to keep from scoring if they get that kind of advantage on him, which happens a lot. And then off the ball, he just gets caught a little lackadaisical. So here, he's late getting there, which forces him to lunge at the closeout, and then he gets his hands on, gets called for a foul, as you see he was going to get beat. It's the same thing here on the weak side, being a little lackadaisical, whether you call it sense of urgency, intensity, whatever you want to say, he's late with it, and then he just his man ends up creating advantage. Luckily, his teammate takes a charge, but like that's not going to get it done at the next level. And then off the ball here, he's got to tag the roll guy, and he's just ball watching. There's way too much film of him standing straight up like this, especially on the weak side, gives up a wide open layup there because he doesn't tag the roll guy. Even this one, you're going to see him reach, so that's what kind of his go-to. Again, I would like to see a sense of urgency. This is Max Crit. Like, you should be sprinting here to the closeout even if you're not going to get it. And he just didn't seem to have that in a lot of the film I watched. So it, maybe it's a mentality thing that can adjust when he gets to the league. I just definitely want to see it. And then the rebounding. So this clip is, you know, I would like, even at 6'4", I'd like to see him grab some more rebounds. Maybe you can blame the air ball on this one. But here, like, get in there and you got to help your team out. This is one where he can get involved and he can help on that rebound. And there's just too many clips where he doesn't. But even if he's not going to be a plus rebounder or a neutral, he can't be a negative. And there were a lot of clips, guys, where this happens. I talked about earlier, just check out your man. Here, completely loses sight of his man. No sense of urgency to box him out. And I do have some worries that while he's a bucket on the offensive end and can create buckets, how many is he going to give up on the defensive end?